protecting the sugar pods when they come up. Now it has shade, 30%. So 70% sun, 30% shade for my winter crop and my summer crop. But this is what I was trying to accomplish. I still have all this room to maneuver around. So if you want to see how I did... Okay, so I'm out in front of my garden first thing in the morning, like I normally am. I always have chores to do. And today, I'm going to go ahead and put up my 30% shade cloth. And I'm going to show you how I do it. This season, for my fall, I'm doing things a little different with the shade cloth. The shade cloth that I used to use is the same, 30%, and it's the same fabric, but I had a different structure where it came up and over and draped down, made out of PVC. Now, I'm going pro, and I put in some metal top rails, and I'm going to go ahead and put grommets in it, and I'm going to connect them so each side of my garden the shade cloth stretches down both sides from beginning to end and shades all of my crops, which really helps. Now, if you want to see the way that I had it before, I'll put the link below. And if you want to see how I redesigned it, I did the framing already and I'm going to put up the shade cloth. I'll show you that in a second, but first, as I normally do in the mornings, I'm going to go check out to see what's going on. In and around my property. So, before I get to all this in there, let's go ahead and take a little walk around. Okay, so over here I got my fence line. That's my hugel culture in there. And along here is going to be all banana trees. I'm getting ready to do that shortly. Now up in here, I've got some banana plants that are waiting to be planted. They're in pots being rooted right now a lot of these I took from pups and some of them are store-bought or I should see say commercially raised bought and up in here is my hookah culture beds that I done where this hump is it's a bed down below two feet are all my logs and you can see the humps going around and in the back, I've got my watermelons growing. And I got some weeds coming in. The cooler weather's coming, so I'm going to take out the weeds and remulch it. And then over here, you've got my garden. This is the beginning of my fall season. So I just plant it. And I'm still planting. I'll show you that in a minute. Up above, you'll notice that my top rail over here on my top around my whole garden has that cable going around and on that cable I have grapevines well the grapevines over here that are growing on the cable that cable serves a purpose long time ago I put that cable up and that keeps the deer out a hundred percent I got a deer proof in your yard and your garden video down below. I'll put the link there. And I decided to grow muscadine grapes on top of it. And that just works out perfectly for me. I made a use out of protecting my property and my plants from deer. And uh, I'm enjoying it each year. I get to eat some grapes. So with that said, let's go ahead and see what else is going on. Okay, so over here, I have some Mexican sunflower that I potted, and they're growing, and they're waiting to be transplanted, or if somebody would like some, contact me.
I got some deer protected fruit trees I planted. And over here, I've got Mexican sunflower around this section because in the middle of it, that's all Comfrey Bakken 14. Comfrey Bakken 14 in Florida likes to be grown in partial shade. So I got the house on one side, I got the palm trees, and I got Mexican sunflower around it. And that allows for my Comfrey Bakken 14 to grow good. Now I was told before I got the Comfrey Bakken 14 up in there that it doesn't grow good in Florida, especially like Central Florida. But there it is. And every few months I chop it down to the ground. I use it for compost tea or chop and drop and it grows back. So it's doing really well. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so over here, I have a pond that I dug and I made, that's man-made. And I have banana plants that I planted around the per perimeter over here. And I have more Mexican sunflower that I use for chop and drop and compost to you there. And I got other fruit trees. And in the back over here, I have a huge mound of chips that I'm composting. Now these chips over here, the chip pile, that's a lot of dump trucks. You're talking maybe a hundred dump trucks on up in there. And then on this side here, that's all horse manure. Composted horse manure that I use on a lot of my stuff. And of course this here is my irrigation system. Now around my irrigation system I got a bunch of barrels and those barrels all have compost tea brewing from the Mexican sunflower and the Comfrey Bakken 14. Plus my unit in there has a fertilizer injector. I put the compost tea in there, it goes through the lines through the injector and it fertilizes my garden way back there. So with that said, let's continue. Okay, so over here around the pond, you can see this stretch over here of soil. I went ahead and tilled that under and I planted some plot food for the deer. And as you can see, It's starting to come up, which is great. On the back stretch of the pond over there, I've got it. And on the other side of the property over there, I've got it also. Did a video on that. I did a bunch of videos on my fertilization, my injector. Did a lot of videos on the Mexican sunflower and the Comfrey Bakken 14. They're all down there in the videos. Do a little search and you'll find all of that. Now over here, we're going to go ahead and take a peek at some banana plants I got growing. <clears throat> okay, so over here, I got some mature banana plants that are bearing fruit right now. And then I have some replacement pups coming in. I keep removing pups, but I always leave one on each plant. That way it's a replacement if it needs it. The pollinators are enjoying the male blossoms right now this morning. And you can see my bananas are coming in good. Those are Orinoco. And over here on this side, we have praying hands. On this side we have praying hands and I have a really nice pup over here almost as wide as the parent plant that's the replacement and then over here I've got a bunch of other banana plants that are having pups I keep separating the pups I got a lot of videos on how I separate pups and 
I usually wait for the pups for the base to be good for the plant to be good and then when they're big enough I separate them I did some landscaping over here that I kind of think looks pretty cool I took a GNU that I had and I made a bed of mulch and I set it on top of it and that's the um, backdrop is the banana plants and back of it on the pond and I think that all looks pretty good what do you think so anyway these banana plants over here I'm getting ready to trim them again these banana plants right over here I do a lot of trimming videos so everybody knows why I trim them and I trim them so they grow faster the bases get wider and they produce fruit quicker so you see this one has one two three four five leaves coming out of it and whenever there's five or six I take one or two off and I always leave four and of course on the bottom over here got a bunch of pups I wait for those pups to get bigger here's another one over here I just trimmed this year day it has one two three four five here are six I'm gonna get ready to take two off this one over here I did a trimming video and I did separation of pups video it's down below somewhere and I got one two three four five six on this the other day when I trimmed them I only left four so it's growing nicely and over here I separated these the other day and this one here I cut this bottom off and it was just flat and all of a sudden it shot out the center again well the top of it kind of cracked when I was separating and as you can see it comes right on up now this banana plant right here has one two three four five six the other day I took a, I trimmed them up and I left four so it's growing nicely by the way pups or banana plants if you cut them boom just cut it in half It'll, the rhizome grows right out of the center okay so down here I got some pups and the pups I trim up too I usually leave about three until they get bigger and then when they get bigger like this whatever is five and above I cut off to leave four here's one two three four five six there's already six on that I left four the other day and the same thing with these and the same thing with the top and the same thing with those and the same thing with the top so what I'm trying to say if you're growing banana plants or want to grow banana plants I got separation videos I got planting videos I got fertilizing I got compost and I show you how I plant and take care of my banana plants and I also show you I also show you how to trim them up to get them to grow taller bushier thicker and produce fruit sooner so if you want to see any I got a playlist about all about bananas down below and I keep adding to it so hope you uh, check them on out okay so over here I got something unique these are hookah culture banana plants I just planted those finished it up about a week ago the videos below and there's probably seven videos parts to it because I dug down three to four feet put a log down there put chips down there and then fill it in with compost and it's just so hot here in Florida that I could only do one two or three a day and then when I dug a bunch of holes we had a lot of rain and the holes filled up with water so it took me a while to get them in but I got them in and if you look they're all doing pretty well right now now I got a few leaves that when I planted them I I cracked them so I got to get in there and trim those up soon I just left them for a little bit but they're all looking good now I designed it so it goes around my flagpole like a half moon so from the street when you look in you see the flagpole and you see it surrounded by banana plants just about like 
you see over there by my pond around the Ginu. Now talking about um, protecting all my shrubbery from deer, this is why. Okay, so you see all those deer tracks. I could scrape this and rake it clean and every morning there'll be deer tracks around all my plants all the way around. So that's why I deer proof my garden and I deer proof plants and I deer proof all my fruit trees that I plant. And there's a video down below I had a 100% deer proof your garden. I deer proofed that garden years ago. Before I deer proofed it, deer would just go right over the fence. And I can guarantee it's 100% deer proof because none gets in now. And there's deer out here right next to the garden because I got my plot field there and I got food there. They're here every night and they don't bother my garden. Now the raccoons and other rodents, yeah, they'll make their way in there over the fence. But hey, I plant extra that way it doesn't bother me if they get one or two so with that said let's go ahead and continue any chance I get I try to get some really good rich dirt that I could go ahead and put around and plant in even though I plant in organic compost I get myself some good dirt so I could build up the soil and then when I go to plant, I dig, I fill with compost, but I still want good soil all over the place. Because Florida, as everybody knows, just basically has sandish type soil. And it's okay for planting. Your plants will grow, but they'll never thrive like my garden thrives unless you take a peek at some of my compost videos in my garden and you'll see what I'm talking about. So with that said, let's go over here. Well, over here I've got a fruit tree and I got a fence around it. And you'll see that some leaves over here are chewed up. But the leaves over here are pretty good. Well, the deer come over here, they put the head in, then they push and they try to eat as much as they could. So they did strip down some leaves around it. I put these here so they can't push in. I'm going to put some rebar there and reforce it a little bit better. And I'm going to put some shade cloth around it so they can't stick their, their head in there. Because they're not going up above it, they're going through it. But I don't mind feeding deer. So if they take a few leaves off of the outside branches, that's okay. Because my purpose of growing that is to get it to grow into a really big mature tree. So long as the bucks don't go ahead and strip off the bark, the tree's going to live. And those smaller branches I'm going to cut because I just want a trunk on the bottom. I don't want branches going all the way to the bottom. So over here in front of the garden, I've got another plot field. And I got some good foliage over here so the deer could forage. And I got this that continues all the way on down. So the deer are right here next to my garden. And they don't hop in the garden because I got that cable. So that's 100% deer proof. So with that said, let me go ahead and get my car to supplies over here. Let's go in the garden and start with the shade cloth. Okay, so I'm in the garden. I got trellises. Here, let's go down the end over here. Okay, so I'm at the back side of my garden because the sun's going to be coming up. Down the walkway over here, I got trellises that go up and over. And then on each side of it, I got beds. Now, what I went ahead and done is I got trellises on the side. And I put this pipe right here up on top. And that's where I'm going to go ahead and connect my shade cloth to. I put it down this side. And I put it down that side. So basically, 
I'm going to have my walkway here. And this whole stretch is going to be all shade cloth. And that whole stretch over there is going to be all shade cloth. And that shade cloth is going to keep my fall and winter crops from getting sunburned. And in the spring, it's going to protect all my spring crops. Because the sun really does havoc on all of that. And everything grows a whole lot better on the shade cloth. I got videos on that and once you see the garden in full bloom with the fruit on it you'll know what I'm talking about. So let's get started over here with the shade cloth and I make all my shade cloth removable because when a storm comes up like a hurricane I take everything down so it doesn't blow away. Plus in between in the summertime when I pull my crop I take it down so the sun just doesn't bake it then I put it back up. So let's get on with it. Okay, right over there is Oregon Sugar Pods 2 and Sugar Snap Peas. Now those are winter crop. The sun does havoc on those. So instead of having them come up, let the sun hit the sprouts and then they die, the shade cloth is gonna protect them as they're sprouting and they'll protect them when they get bigger. Plus over there on my porch, which I'll show you in a little bit towards the end of the video, I've got plants that I sowed in the house, as I did the tomato plants that I planted out here. I do that in racks under the LED lights. And I've got other winter crop right now on the porch that I sowed. Those are all coming up. Things like onion and lettuce and whew, squash and zucchini and um, cauliflower and all that, you know stuff going on so anyway let me get some of this done okay so over here I got shade cloth right here and now this shade cloth isn't the type from Amazon this is commercial shade cloth that go to all the growers and greenhouses and nurseries this is what they use it is tough as can be I spend a little extra I buy it by the roll 300 foot to a roll that roll can't even fit in back of the pickup without it sticking out so it's long you can get different lengths but it's long and when you go to pick it up it is heavy so basically it's not going to go on your UPS truck so the stuff you get on Amazon that they fold up in a little package is like garbage, plastic bags, real thin. This is super thick, and you get them in big rolls. If you want to know where I get them, go ahead and contact me below. I'll be happy to share that with you. So anyway, what I need to do with these is I got my little garden basket here. Is I got this tool right here. And this tool right here puts grommets, grommets like this, into material. It could be your shade cloth, it could be tarps for boats. You ever have a tarp over a boat or something and this little grommet right here pulls out? Use that tool, crimp it back in. Or you buy a tarp, it's got a grommet here and a grommet there, but you need one there, you could put one in. So with that said, I got the pipe over here, and I don't know exactly how this is going to stretch out yet. So I'm going to utilize some string to tie it up in the beginning. And then once I can measure, then I'll know how long my bungee cord ties are going to be. I'm going to slip it through, wrap it around, take that little ball, and it'll stretch. So when the wind pulls it, that bungee stretches a little bit and it'll keep it stretched tight so you don't want these to go exactly all the way to that because it'll sag but when you got the bungee on it it'll give that stretch and it'll stay nice and flat so let's see how this works out okay I'm just gonna cut a little piece of string here like this I loop it and
I'm gonna put it through that first grommet. Now, on the shade cloth, over here, you see there's a red line? Well, that red piece of material, shade cloth over here, that's the direction of the roll. So this here, I cut these already that I was using on the previous setup I had. I got videos down below on that one, which worked out perfect. But this here, I'm just trying to take it to the next level and be more pro. And that's why I say garden like a pro. I get pro results. So whether or not I'm a pro, that's for you guys to decide. But my garden is kick butt. <laughs> okay, so anyway, this goes the full length. 300 feet on the row where there's no where there's no color red like that this is the part that I cut so that determines which way you want to put it up so you're not trying to figure it out after you cut it so and if you want to see how I roll it out and get my cuts real straight I got videos of that down below too because I do it on the concrete pad I have over by my house uh, it's 40 foot long and 40 foot wide and so I roll it down the middle and I use the lines of the concrete so I get a straight cut okay so I just put that up there just so it hangs and I'm gonna go ahead and go to that side over there okay so before I go over there what I need to do is I need to take a grommet and put it in this side so I can stretch out the four corners and determine how I'm gonna do all the other ones in between so there's two parts to a grommet there's the bottom part it's flat and then there's the top part which has that in it and this will go in there like that and then get crimped down hopefully that shows good you can see there's two parts put the bottom part in there and the top part in there like that this is magnetized so it holds it and then depending on where you want it in the material you just put it in like that and then you crimp just push down like that release it and there's a grommet it even puts the hole in there a little bit. You might have to see it, that hole in there. So that's holding, that's holding really well right now, hopefully. It'll grab the material, and then you can put your rope through it. Let me go ahead and do the other two sides. Okay, so I got the grommets on there, the bottom and the top, they're being held on by a magnet. Now I'm going to come over here, take it like that, and squeeze, squeeze it really good like that, real tight. Now that grommet is on there like that. Okay, here's side number four. I put the bottom, put the top, like that. And then I just look for a spot, put it in. Right there looks good, and I squeeze like that. Okay, there you go. Now I got a grommet on four sides. So once again, I get a little piece of string.
I like just to put a little knot on one side. And once again, the string here is temporary to hold it up so I could get it all stretched out. And once it's stretched out, then I'll be able to tell how I want it, put the grommets in to see how tight I could get it, and then I gotta go get some bungee cord, either four inches, six inches, eight inches, I don't know the length yet. So this is the prototype. Once I do this, I'll, I'll be able to know what size grommet, I mean, excuse me, what size bungee cords I need. So let me get this up. Okay, so this way is too long. That's where the red goes through. So this is the side that I cut. And if I put this up, So I just put that up temporary. Now I'm going to go ahead and get this other side. Let's see how it's going to look. Okay, so I want to get this other end up. I gotta do the other end. Okay, the sun's over there, so I'm on this side so I can show you. I got to watch where I step. I just see it, but you can see I got it over on the top there. It cuts across to that side of the pipe. Over here, I got this hanging, so I got to put a grommet in and attach it. And I got to attach it on this side. So I want it stretched out from right to left. And then from side to side and see how good I could stretch it out because I put the grommets on the ends I might have to move the grommets in towards the middle a little bit more and that's a good thing about being able to do your grommets if you put a grommet let's say right here and it sags you could put another one another inch in or two inches in and then I'll have more meat like that to grip on. You don't have to just put it on the end and you can't stretch it out. You could always, if it stretches, you could go, you could move your fingers in more, one inch, two inches, or three inches, or more, and then you could stretch it out more. And if it doesn't reach all the way over, like this, if it doesn't reach, you put it at the end and you could just use a longer bungee cord. So let me get at it. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to take another grommet, like this, and I want to go ahead and put another one in. Now that's not measured out, I'm just going to take it right here, put it in. 
the grommets in. Gonna take another piece of string and let's see where we're at. Okay, the strings through the grommet. Let's go ahead and pull it up right here and give it a tie. Okay, and I'm putting that up with slip knots so I could undo it or readjust it. You can see this pulls, this is stretched out. Now I gotta go down that end over there and do another. Okay, I moved the camera, so I'm going to head and put this grommet right here on the top. Put that grommet right there on the bottom. Now I'm going to look for a spot that looks even with the other. And I'm going to take this. I put that grommet on right there. Let me get a piece of string. Now, as you can see, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. If you laid it out on concrete or the ground, you could use a ruler and you could measure. You could take all the time you want. I just like to be productive. This is my prototype. Once I see how it's done, then I could do the ends and I can measure towards the center and towards the end and get each one even. Okay, so I got this one stretched out right here. Now I'm gonna have to do the same thing over here and over there. And then the center over here, probably can't see that, and then the center, I'll stretch out. Remember, it's shade cloth. Doesn't have to be 100% perfect, because the shade it's still going to come down if a little sunlight goes through the little gaps on the side. That's perfectly okay. It's keeping the majority of Florida's hot sun from boiling your plants. If you have a watermelon or a tomato or whatever it is and that sun hits it all day, it gets up to 102, 103 degrees in the upper 90s that's enough to make it boil on the inside but when you reduce it 30 percent that's shaded so you don't get that when i'm working in the garden and i'm in direct sun as soon as i get under the shade cloth it's like moving under a tree in the shade you can feel the difference because you don't have that direct sunlight but yet it lets enough light in 70 percent and 30 percent shade to make all the difference in the world. Now, 30%, the reason why I say 30%, because 40% and 50%, I think shades out your vegetables too much, and that could hurt your plant. And not enough still lets a lot more sun in, but something's better than nothing. Too much is no good, because it'll shade out, and a lot of plants do not do good in the shade. 30% is the perfect sweet spot, that's what all your growers and nurseries utilize, 30%.
on, on almost 100% of your vegetable crops. Now they might not, they might use heavier on ferns and other stuff. So that's all up for grabs. This is what I use. And if you want to see how my garden grows, I got a lot of video tours and you'll see how well they do. For instance, tomato plants. My tomato plants all the way through until when I harvest them all, the leaves, I don't have any except for maybe one or two here and there on the side where the sun hits it. They're all nice, plush, green, and flat. They almost look fake. The tomatoes itself grow nice and hardy and I eliminate a lot of the problems that you get when sun bakes them. Check out my videos. Plus, I don't have blossom end rod and fungus and stuff like that on the tomato plants. You know, I got things from planting the tomato plants, what compost I use, to when they grow, what I fertilize with, how I keep them that way. That's for another video. I've got all that down below for right now. Let's stick to the shade cloth and get on with it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and that and that and that. And then I'll get back with you. Okay, so I went ahead and put four more on. Now I'm gonna get some string and tie them up, see what it looks like. Okay, let's take a little look and see what that looks like. Okay, so I went ahead and I put the grommets in in a couple places. You could kind of see when I stretch it out, you'll see little spots like that. That's okay, but I still got to add more grommets to it. And you'll see it stretches out across the center and it stretches out that way. Now this side here is pretty straight. And this side here is bowed in, so I got to move it over. But if you look on the ground, the sun's hitting the shade cloth here. So let me go over here. Anyways, you see that sun glaring? Watch this. As soon as I go under the shade cloth, did you see the difference? Watch. Glare? No glare. A lot of glare, less glare. So anyway, let me go ahead and secure this up a little better and see what I got to do. But for right now, it's up. That's all you got to do. You just have to have it up like that. And it's already projecting shade onto the beds. I won't be able to show you how much until that sun's up overhead when it's overhead i'll show you the mulch direct sun and then i'll move under the shade and you can see what the difference is okay so i put one one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine stretched out. You could put 10, you could put 15, whatever you want. So let's see how this works out.
Yeah, I'm going to have to put one in the center there, too. Okay, so I got them going across both sides. Little gap in the center. That doesn't matter. It just means a tomato plant could grow out of it. But I'm going to put one in the center just to see what it's like. Okay, let's go ahead and check it out. Now that I put grommets going down both sides and one on each middle side, I think it's looking pretty good so far. Now remember that string is temporary. This is the type of twine that the sun would deteriorate and it would just fall apart. I need to get some good UV resistant bungee cord to hold that up with. That way when the wind blows it flexes and the sun don't make it deteriorate. I feel that sun coming up. Here you go. I got to face the sun. That way it looks good in the camera. If I go this way, look how dark I get. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, as you can see up here, I went ahead and did this side. And you can kind of see how they kind of do that. Unless you pull the sides real tight. I mean, you're just going to go ahead and get that. But that doesn't matter. The purpose of the shade cloth is to produce shade. Then I put one in the center. Right there. And then I have these along that side. And then I have one in the center there. Let's see what it looks like from over here. Okay, so there you go. That shade cloth is up and doing its job it's producing shade so anyway now i could have took the roll and i could have went all the way down and all the way down that way with one piece but then it's a lot bigger bulkier heavier if i do each individual section like this in between the beds then I could go ahead and untie it anytime I want, fold it up, and take it inside when there's a storm. Or if I need to replace it, don't have to replace the whole thing. You normally, if something happens, it only happens to one of them. So, anyways, there you go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do all of my trellises going all the way around. This center walkway, the trellises that I have vines that go up and over. If you look at some of my other videos, you'll see how thick with vegetation my trellises get. But for right now, I got them just sewed and seeded. This one here is the first one that grew and made it to the top. And it's already producing... Blue Lake Stringless String Beans. So I'm happy about that. But all my trellises, I already sowed the seeds. I'm waiting for them to sprout out. Like these right here. Some of them already started to sprout and they're growing. So pretty soon into the season, if all goes well, all my trellises are going to have foliage and fruit going around all of them like last season look below at my garden tours you'll see what i'm talking about and then all my other plants that i have planted in all my beds over here they're all going to be taken taken off i just since this is a winter crop i definitely want to get all my shade cloth going so this year 
I'm doing my shea cloth a little different and to me it's more professional style than last year I always try to improve on things so if you would go ahead and like the video subscribe to my channel I always do creative stuff like this and the approach that I take to from composting and planting and taking care of the plants I'm sure it's gonna benefit you and everybody else that subscribes so what do you got to lose check it out okay now that I got the first one up and I know what I need to accomplish I could just lay this on the ground and I could put my grommets in evenly I'll do this side that side I'll fold it do the center and work my way around Okay. So this is where I'm at. I did them on the ground, as you can see, all the grommets are relatively spaced out evenly going across. So now I'm going to go ahead and install this one right over here and see what it looks like. I think it went a lot quicker by doing it on the ground like that. Okay, I did the four corners. Now I'm going to do the centers. And we'll see how that goes. Okay, two more strings. We'll see how that looks. Just a word about this. If you're going to do anything like this, don't get the ones that you got to put the grommet on the bottom and on the top and tap down. Usually they squish too much. They don't grab it really good. And you wouldn't be able to do it like this. Invest in one of these and boom, it's done. Okay, let's see how it looks. So as you can see, I went ahead and put the shade cloth along the top on this side and the back side. This is what it looks like from underneath it over here. It's looking pretty good, I think. So I got this bed done and I got that bed done so far. Two beds are done. Remember, I still got to get the bungee cord, but for now, I'm going to put all of them up like that. So this new growth, when they come up, they're protected now, and that row is protected. The ones over on these beds are not protected at the moment. So I still have more to go. So with that said, let me get at it. Okay, I put grommets in this one. And now I'm putting it up. Okay, I got this up. I did those two beds because I sowed some seeds. And I have some seeds sowed here of sugar pods. They don't like hot summer sun even though we'll get into the fall where September is hot sun so let me finish tying this up and all the others I'll do as um, I got some time and I sow more seeds but this is important to get this done right now on my daily workload before they start sprouting out of the ground because once they sprout out, you'll have that hot sun on them. And they probably won't do good. So this right here is going to protect my sprouts for my fall winter crop. Okay, let's check it out. Okay, so you know, I went ahead and did this prototype, and I did that one. So that bed and that bed 
is protected from the sun right now and also the bed on the other side and I just went ahead and did this bed right here and this is how it looks the shade clots way up here 30 percent and it looks really nice going around it's a good distance above my head and this is protecting the sugar pods when they come up now it has shade 30 percent so 70 percent sun 30 percent shade for my winter crop and my summer crop but this is what i was trying to accomplish i still have all this room to maneuver around so if you want to see how i did the fabrication of my last year's framing for the shade cloth i'll put a link below and if you want to see how i did the framing and the fabrication for putting the post and the railings up over the t-post to make my framing i'll put that link below i got videos on both of those so with that said i hope you enjoyed please give me a like subscribe you'll see a lot more diys to come up and you'll see a lot of good crops growing you'll see a lot of diy projects but most importantly you'll see how i garden like a pro and i'll show you how to get the same results as i'm getting till then later